Well, we just returned from a cruise wedding. So today in this video, we're going to cover everything from the time you come up with the idea of going on a cruise for your wedding all the way through to the actual cruise itself. So yeah. stay tuned. Come along. So our daughter came to us and said, we want to get married on a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. So then the fun <laughs> began. <laughs> uh, the first thing you need to do when that happens is to figure out what cruise line and what cruise ship. Yes, there's so many different cruise lines and they offer so many different experiences that you really need to talk to the bride and groom mm -hmm. to figure out what their expectations are what type of wedding they want to have, whether it's a formal or casual event. Yeah, how many people are coming? Right. Because they may have 100 relatives come, then 75 are over the age of 60. That may change your perception of what you want for a wedding. Right, so many things to consider in the very initial planning. But once you get that hammered out, there seems to be a little bit of a procedure. Yeah, once you choose your cruise line, you're, you're a good chunk of the way there because now you can start actually doing something, but you really can't start booking or doing anything until you have that decision. Right. Because then you have to decide when is it going to be. Mm -hmm. It has to be far enough ahead that you can get everybody booked on the ship. Mm -hmm. And you have to uh, contact the, the cruise line and make sure that you're able to get married on the day you yes. want. Yeah, and then when you do that, you have to figure out the cruise lines offer different types of weddings. You can right. get married on uh, D bar, or sorry, you can get married embarkation on embarkation day. day. Uh, you can get married at a day at sea. You can get married at a port day. Even on the beach at a port day is an option. So there's so many different options. And then there's also different tiers of, of the type of wedding you want, what experience you want. Do you right. want bare bones? Do you want the whole deal? Right. There's definitely, they have packages that you get to choose from, which is kind of convenient. Um, the other thing is that you will be assigned a wedding coordinator, one that you deal with prior to getting on the ship that's land-based, and then one or two, depending on the amount of people you have, uh, once you get on on the actual cruise. Yeah, and when you're, when you're choosing the cruise line, you choose your cruise date, then the other thing that you need to consider is your wedding venue is moving. Where are we going? Where's the itinerary? You know, what part would be ideal for people coming to your wedding? Mm -hmm. You have to make that decision. And here out in Canada, everybody, almost everybody would fly. Right. Uh, if you're booking a wedding from a crowd in the United States, you might choose a West Coast or East Coast port, depending on how close most of the guests would be. And then from there, you choose your itinerary. Typically, a wedding cruise, seven days is normal, I would say. Right. Yeah, you could do shorter. We have seen people getting married on a three or four day cruise too. And that for some people is easier for to convince non-cruising family members to join them. Yeah, and that's a big factor because you're probably going to have a lot of people, I know that we did, that have never cruised before. The so majority, yeah. They're looking for a lot of guidance right from the very beginning steps of how to book all the way to the final days of packing. So that's yeah. one thing to consider. For sure. Yeah, so you've, you've got your venue, you know where you're going to, you've got your cruise line, you've got an idea of your demographics, you've probably hopefully starting to build a number of people soon because the next step is building that group booking. Right. Now some cruise lines, they want you to book a group with a single booking agent. All together. Yes. Everybody using the same travel agent, everybody booking under the same umbrella, which can be convenient or it can be a little bit of a challenge, especially if you have guests from different states, provinces, countries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you may have people coming to the wedding that have, are used to booking cruises on their own and they may want to book it themselves. Or they may have a travel agent they've used for decades and they want to use the same travel agent. So, yeah, so that was a challenge we had to overcome, for yes, sure. Yes, so you've got to figure out that. And then some cruise lines don't require it to be the same agent. You can have multiple bookings coming into the same group. Right. That's, that's an easier situation. So yeah, if you're looking for flexibility, that's a question to ask the cruise line right at the very beginning when you're trying to pick what cruise line you want to go with. And when you're booking the cruise wedding, keep in mind there's there's two pieces. It's kind of interesting that you've got the booking, which is the wedding piece, which is through an external agency at the very beginning stage. Mm -hmm. And then there is the piece of the group booking. So the group booking and the wedding, they're, they're eventually linked together. 
right. as you head towards the final parts of, of final payment and bringing things together. But, but it's kind of set up as two separate entities in yeah. the beginning, which can be a little bit of a challenge. Now, the interesting thing is you cannot book the wedding until you at least have booked one reservation. So if you're going to get your group going, you've got to get, you know, we started with the bride and groom as the first yeah, reservation. The very first cabin we booked was for the bride and groom. And then from there, we are allowed to reserve the wedding date that they want it. Yeah. And so once you have that in place, then you've got to start the booking process. So with a group booking, you're usually given an initial rate. Everybody pays the same rate for the type, same type of cabin. Mm -hmm. You can get different cabin types for your group and you start booking, that becomes a bit of a challenge because prices fluctuate on the public websites. Whereas mm -hmm. your group booking can stay the same. Now you can adjust prices uh, here and there if you need to. If they drop, you can adjust them. But mm -hmm. there is a bit of a challenge there because your group booking gives you a set rate. Now what do you get for that rate? So the first thing you get is the option to use some kind of a point system where you can choose what perks the group gets. So usually a group booking doesn't involve a big price discount, it involves add-ons to the booking that you wouldn't normally get. So you can get things like chocolate covered strawberries delivered to the state room of all the guests that will be traveling with you. Um, yeah, you can get uh, a free picture or a couple pictures uh, throughout the cruise are, are complimentary. You can get uh, you know a bottle of uh, bubbly delivered to the cabin. Uh, you can even use uh, some of those points to get uh, onboard uh, credits, for example, depending on how many points, you know, $25, $50, that type of thing mm -hmm. uh, per cabin. And one of the, the nice features of a, of a wedding group booking is you can also book a, a cocktail party for the group. Mm -hmm. So that way everybody you can be a meet and greet or you all get together and there would be uh, uh, drinks served and hors d'oeuvres served. Now that is dependent on a minimum amount of people yeah. too. So if you just have a few people, you won't get those perks. The more people you have, the more points you earn, the more perks you're allowed to, to put towards the, the event. Yeah. And if you, if you just Google group bookings for cruises, you'll find that most cruise lines provide a lot of information or brochures on how this happens. So you can do it through a travel agent. It is possible to do it yourself without a travel agent. Mm -hmm. It's more of a challenge, but you can do it. And one of the other perks of the group amenity as well is you get, if you book enough cabins, then you can get uh, discounted fares on uh, a few cabins. Depends how many, how many bookings you have in your group. So you can get a discount that way. Now you don't get a full free uh, room or cabin. What you get is, uh, you know, the part of the cabin that's not the taxes, the port taxes, all that. Uh, so there is a little bit of a discount. It's not a complete free cabin, but there is that if you book enough. And that depends. Usually it's around 16 bookings gets you a free cabin. Hmm. So that's one of the benefits of the group booking. But uh, so yeah, so you've got your group set up now. You're starting to book people at that point and everybody has to put a deposit down to have that booking, of course. And then you move towards, uh, you know, starting to plan the wedding a little bit. And that first stage is with that third party company. Yeah, so what will happen is you will reach out, you'll be assigned a, a wedding coordinator, a land-based wedding com uh, coordinator. They're a third party that the cruise lines contract this job to. And that person will set up with you some of their preferences that you want. So you get to pick the color of flowers you wanna have to be carrying for your wedding. Um, the type of cake you would like to have. Uh, what are some of the other options? And, and one of the, the negotiations that begins there is also the venue on the ship specifically. That's right, so where you, you want the wedding ceremony to take place, whether it's gonna be an indoor event, whether it's going to be on the deck. Um, it could be in the chapel, it could be in a lounge. Really a lot of that depends on the size of your your group, group as well. If you have a large group, a lot of the chapels on the cruise ships are small. Yeah, so you have to sort of wait until you know exactly how many people you're you're bringing with you to know what venue you can you can have arranged. Even some of the outdoor um, setup places that they have is still limited to a small number of people because they take a tiny a tiny little nook of the ship and and do it there. So if you have seventy five people, that becomes a challenge. So it depends on the group size for sure. And also when you're choosing the venue at this point, you're also choosing the uh, time of your wedding. That again is a little bit negotiable, mm -hmm. uh, simply depending on the availability in the ship. And also a lot of the cruise lines have the captain booking. And so- Not booking, but marrying so, you. Uh, yeah, you have so the captain you're, you. you're at the discretion of the captain's schedule for, yeah. for the most part. 
Yeah, and they do always tell you in the back, you know, if, if something happens during the cruise that requires the captain's attention or some sort of emergency, your wedding might be officiated by someone different other than the captain, or it could even be changed as far, yeah, you could change the time. So. The timeline might be changed on you. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm sure that would be a very rare thing, but that's something in the back of your mind that it is an operating vessel that has a lot of other passengers and moving parts going on at the same time. Right. If you're planning on doing it at a sea day, it's different. If you're doing it on embarkation day, because obviously the cruise yeah. hasn't left port, and uh, and a lot of people choose that option because then they can get a marriage license from that state wherever the ship is is docked yeah. at. Yeah, the marriage license can get a little bit complicated, and it's it's so complicated we probably can't cover all the situations. But yeah, a lot of times you have to get a marriage license either for where you're getting married, or an international one if you're at sea or at land, yeah. or you can do a ceremonial wedding where they you get legally married before the cruise. And one thing that you should know, if you do an embarkation marriage, then you have the option of bringing guests on board that aren't going to be sailing with you on the cruise. They can come onto the ship and they can be part of the wedding and then they leave the ship and the people that want to stay and continue on for the rest of the cruise can do that. Yeah, they're basically given a visitor's pass for a yep. few hours. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you've got all that. Everything's happening as you're moving close to final payment day. Final payment day is when things really start to become more permanent. You've got your final count for your guests. And that helps determine what your perks for your group are. You also have lined up for sure your venue of your wedding. Um, if you're doing a cocktail party, you've, you've negotiated date and time and location of that. And uh, everybody's paid at the same time. Um, the, the wedding, any additional uh, costs to the wedding have to be paid at that time as well. Mm -hmm. And I should have noted that when you first book the wedding, every cruise line is a little bit different. Some want a, a deposit. Usually it's a substantial deposit or some want full payment right up front. Right so up front, yeah. In our situation, we paid all, everything up front. Up front. Yeah, before we had anybody confirmed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we picked the package that uh, the bride and groom wanted and we paid for that, that yeah. package. So in those final days after you've made final payment, and you, there's other things to consider, such as, you know, pictures, for example. Uh, there's packages available that the cruise line will offer. Like all the final details can be added at that point, and you're 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 almost to the point where everything is set. You've you've got your guest list, you've got everything, and at some point in there, leading up to the days of the cruise, you kind of relinquish coordination with the third party, mm -hmm. and now you're going to start dealing with the cruise line themselves. Yes, as you get on board. So, and what we did leading up to it is we set up an account on social media that we kind of tried to prepare people ahead of the cruise as far as, you know, what you need to consider for packing, you know, what day-to-day -day life's going to be on the cruise ship, uh, even things about pre-booking excursions and all those, all the regular stuff you do for cruising. Remember, those first-time cruisers, they're not going to know to do that stuff, so you need to kind of bring them into the loop as you head towards getting on the ship. Okay, so we're done all the long-term planning, and it is the week before the wedding. All right, so in our scenario, what happened was our daughter, the bride, received an email from the cruise ship wedding coordinator, yeah. the one that's on board, that we were going to meet once we got on the ship. She and received an email three days prior to us getting on the ship. And that was the first contact with anybody actually on the ship mm -hmm. was the week before. Right, and that email basically contained uh, a list of things that the bride and groom had priorly booked with their land-based coordinator just to confirm that those things were right and there were a few errors so my daughter was able to uh, rectify those things but it also told us when we were meeting for a rehearsal which was very important for us to know date and time and all that sort of thing yeah and before we got to the rehearsal we're at that stage where those phone calls had happened that groundwork was laid with the bride finally that first contact with someone on the ship mm -hmm. okay and so now you're at the point where it's the day to get on the ship for your wedding cruise mm -hmm. And if you have a wedding booked on the very first day on the embarkation day, then you typically you're allowed on first with you, your wedding party, your guests, and those things start to happen. Right. That was in our situation, but that is one of the options for booking a wedding is to do it that first day and people can join, they can be part of the wedding, they can even leave the ship if they're not going on the cruise and everyone else stays on. Before but you disembark, yeah. That was in our situation because our situation was the wedding was the next day. On our first sea day was the wedding. So we were able to get on board the ship and my daughter had arranged with her wedding coordinator for a noon um, rehearsal time. Yep. They allowed her to pick the time, they told her what time during that day and she had picked the, the actual time. And so we got on board and did the rehearsal right away once we all got on board. 
Yeah, so that is, you know, your wedding party. Anybody that's involved with the actual wedding, the moving parts of it, I guess. Right. And also, at the same time, they have people there that are sound, you know, audio people that you can, you give your music to, if you have special music. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also, I don't know how many people, how you want seating. It depends on the venue. In our situation, we had a Take 5 lounge. Mm -hmm. Uh, some people, if it's a smaller group, can be at the chapel itself. And right. The seating's a little more, you know, laid out already for you. Mm hmm but yeah, and you also can, if it's a bigger party, you can even have it in one of the lounges. Right. So, yeah. so once once you have that done, you're pretty well set. The plans are laid. Uh, the The wedding coordinator has all the last minute details, and everything is at that point is kind of turned over. And uh, you're kind of hoping when you get up in the morning that everything's the way you want. Yeah. So. In our situation, we did uh, check the next morning and uh, we had to make a couple of small little tweaks here and there just for spacing and how people were going to stand. But all in all, uh, they take care of everything for you, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. They they really do pamper you. Yeah, they rearranged the whole venue of, of the, of the uh, lounge that we were in and set it all up. And they brought in beautiful flowers and decorations yep. to make it look more bridal and, and wedding-like. And they had set it up. They had the music. Uh, the bride and groom were asked to give a, a photo of themselves that they had digitally on the That's on right. the big screens in the in the area. So they had their engagement photos uh, being shown there. I'm just trying to think some of the other stuff. They were able to pick the music that they wanted to walk down the aisle with and all of that. So that was uh, played for them. So they brought their music on a on a music uh, a zip drive, zip yeah. drive, and, yeah. and just handed that over to the. To the sound people and they looked after all of those sort of things yeah and at that time believe it or not the captain's kind of involved uh, mm -hmm. our daughter had told us that that night the captain had reviewed the vows and the ceremony to make sure everything was you know ready to go from his standpoint and he knew his role and yeah uh, they had <laughs> received a phone call the night prior to the yeah. wedding in their cabin that night it, in it, regards to it all yeah making sure the vows and everything were just the right way so yeah that was that was encouraging to see the captain involved at that early and it's so nice having the captain part of the wedding on Princess Cruise is yeah. that, uh, yeah, uh, yes. So it's the day of. So the day of, there's a lot of stuff going on, especially for the bride. You know, what's the bride do and how did it work for us? Right. So, so the bride and some of the bridal party and uh, family members had previously before getting on board, I would say probably right around the same time that we did final payment. They all booked their uh, salon appointments yep. for hair and makeup and that sort of thing. So the bride did that first thing in the morning with a few other people. And then from there went back to her room and we did all the other preparations that needed to have happen. And, and yeah. yeah, and there was some some interesting little pieces that you wouldn't normally think of that you'd, in a normal land based wedding would be laid out well ahead of time. But one of the challenges was the dining room setup. And at the same time that the wedding's about to happen and we're getting all the details in place, there's there's an attempt to figure out what's the seating arrangement going to be in the dining room so we can have place cards for everybody and know where everybody's going to sit and is the tables of 10 or 8 or what is that situation? Right. So at the same time wedding prep's happening, that stuff's going on in the background with people that are helping you with your wedding. And so the girls have gone, they've got their hair done, they've got their makeup. Uh, in our situation, the wedding, uh, the, the timing seemed to be flexible. The, the bride asked for certain times. There was kind of a, a negotiations back and forth, an hour here and half an hour there. But in our case, it was 2.30 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So they shut down the lounge the morning of as they're setting up, of course. And all that's happening while the bridal party was getting all their hair and makeup done. Uh, my, myself, for example, went down to check the venue one last time to make sure everything was you know, how we expected it to be. Yeah. So that's a chance to do that. And uh, yeah, then, then the biggest challenge is, you know, getting the bride down the aisle and everybody in the venue and ready to go. So um, and that's, you know, it's a big cruise ship. So there's lots of people <laughs> and you have to get everybody there on time and... Then the bride in our situation, part of the excitement I think of a cruise wedding is the bride making her way through the ship and getting to the venue. Mm -hmm. There's people everywhere, as you know, on a cruise ship and they are you know, applauding, they're congratulating, they're asking, you know, yeah. the obvious questions. Are you getting married today? I think they have surprises. Have you bride. already gotten married <laughs> yeah. or on your, are you on yeah. your way to get married? And so they could tell that, you know, she was walking with Jerry that, oh, she's with her dad right now. So obviously they're on their way to go get married. So they were yeah. wishing her good luck as she, they're walking through the, uh, Foyer area, and I, and I think that's one of the highlights of a cruise wedding is that piece of it, especially in a ship like the Sky Princess that we were on. There's a beautiful piazza you can walk and, and you work your way down through it. It's uh, 
It's it's quite the scene to see a bride working her way down the spiral staircases to the venue in the last few moments before she is uh, to, to have the ceremony. Yeah, it was nice. So yeah, so everything's set up, and then when it comes to the next part, it, the wedding is pretty well your a normal wedding from the time the bride starts walking down the aisle. People stand up. There's music. They they make their way and uh, their vows. Mm -hmm. uh, in our situation for photography, uh, the bride had paid for. Uh, the, the, in part of the package, mm -hmm. the photographer was included for an hour, mm -hmm. and the uh, the photographer was there for a big part or all of the ceremony, taking pictures all the way through it. And, and then they had a private one hour session yes, after that. Yeah, and and the photography was fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, we were we were back and forth, and you know, even on land based weddings, it can be an expensive thing, and, and you know, it was it was pricey on the cruise ship, uh, no more so than land, maybe even less so. Less, but yeah. the quality was. Fantastic. Yeah. So we're really happy to pay you know that extra. Yeah, she, they received some beautiful uh, pictures of the whole event for yeah. sure. So after the wedding's done, the bride and groom, they do their photography. Often on cruise ships, one of the things they want to do is go to the bridge and have pictures taken at the bridge and have the captain invite them up there. So that happens. And we've seen that on other videos as well for, for cruise weddings. Yeah. And then you've got to have a gap there between what's going to happen next because they're off taking pictures, just like a typical wedding where you're, you know, usually people are making their way to a reception or a hall or something. Kind of the same thing, but on a cruise ship, you just kind of wander around and find a, somewhere to have a drink. Mm -hmm. We had reserved a one hour reception for the wedding in the same venue where the wedding was happening. So for us, that was really easy. The bride and groom went off for pictures. We kind of just mingled because it was already a lounge to begin with. And then they had uh, an hour where drinks were served. So if you had people that didn't have a drink package, for example, they would have free drinks at the venue at that point. Right. Uh, they had hors d'oeuvres and there's a list of hors d'oeuvres, uh, appetizers that could be chosen ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, in our situation, we had someone with a food allergy. So we mentioned that and that was customized as well. Mm -hmm. And and then from then, uh, we just uh, had the bride came back to that reception and you, you kind of break apart a normal wedding into pieces on a cruise ship is the way I've described it. There's a ceremony and then pictures and then there's kind of a gap and then uh, we, we at the reception there were some speeches and some toasts. You know, typically that you would do that at the hall at the wedding. Yeah, the after dinner. dinner we did it prior to dinner, dinner because last one we had chosen to to reserve the private reception hour. But you're allowed to pick when you yeah. want it to do that. You can do we that did after it dinner. this way because they want it to be able to go dancing in the piazza after dinner in the evening. So we had picked the reception for prior to dinner. Yeah, so then when the reception was done in our situation, uh, like I said, it was before dinner. We kind of used it as a cocktail hour and speeches. Uh, and, and like uh, Jill says, you could you could have that after dinner or even have it a, a couple days down the road or before the wedding, depending on the timing of how that works for you. Mm -hmm. We squeezed it all in the same day, but it worked out really well. Then you make your way to dinner. You do have different options for dinner. Um, I believe if you wanted to, you could do specialty dining if you wanted to go all out, or you can have a venue even and pay extra for that. We used the main dining room and uh, just had everybody sitting together and organized that, and that worked really well. Yeah, the options were really nice because everybody was or able to order whatever they wanted, and so they had the full menu to use. And so it worked out for everybody to have what they wanted for dinner. Yeah, it worked out really nice because the wedding was on a formal night on the cruise ship. Yes. So everybody on the cruise ship was already dressed up like they're going to a wedding. Mm -hmm. And we were actually having the wedding on the same day, which yeah. was a nice touch. Worked out well. And then uh, the bride and groom had purchased a wedding cake that were actually a cane was part of the package. Part of the package. And you can upgrade that as well if you want. But that came at the end of our dinner and that was served in the dining room and you know pictures with the cake and the cutting of the cake all that the have a normal wedding was was in the dining room they had a spare table where that happened mm -hmm. and then we were done with uh, with dinner right and uh, some of it was unscripted from that point on mm -hmm. we we hadn't at this point had the first dance of the bride and groom we weren't sure how that was going to work whether it was going to be something we were going to have to have the wedding coordinator organize the band or we were up in the air about that right up to the day of the wedding we were and we kind of were hoping we'd find just a band or a musician playing somewhere that would have something appropriate that we'd want. And we were hoping it was going to be the piazza. And sure enough, it happened. Mm -hmm. In our situation, they were just finishing as we showed up with the bride yeah. and groom. We heard that they we, were just about to pack yeah. up and go on a break. And so I just went up and asked if they mind doing a first dance song. And of course, they obliged. And within seconds, the bride and groom were introduced with their names and everything yeah. brought out to the piazza and had their first dance. And it was beautiful. Yes. As the bride 
time group of dancing, you all of a sudden turn a 50 person wedding into a, you know, a few hundred people, maybe a thousand people in the piazza, all on different levels, looking down yes. on the bride and groom, watching, taking pictures themselves, feel like they almost feel like they're part of a wedding at that point. And mm -hmm. yeah, again, another magical part of the, the cruise wedding experience is, is that experience right there. Mm -hmm. And we've seen other cruises where it's very similar and, uh, and the guests are very, very, what's the word I'm looking for? Gracious. Gracious, uh, excited to, to see someone getting married on the mm -hmm. ship. We had people that wanted to buy the bride and groom drinks. Mm -hmm. Even though they had the drink package, people were insisting that they wanted to do yeah. something. We had people that were running events on the ship that would see the bride and groom walk through the ship and they would offer staff them the champagne member. and you know the stuff. And yeah, it was, it was uh, everything you dream of for a cruise wedding, it was and it is. And I think that's a lot to do with the the cruise lines with their coordinators and the officers and everybody on board, they know it's a special time. Mm -hmm. And in our situation, it was, uh, they, the Sky Princess had said this was the youngest bride and groom they had had yeah. since the ship started sailing. So it was kind of special for them to see these young couple off and, and get their their, uh, their life together started right on the cruise ship. Yeah, yeah for sure. So once you are, once you've done that, then uh, your wedding's done. The pressure's off <laughs> and there's a lot of, I don't know if it's pressure, but excitement and nerves leading up to that with everybody involved. There's a lot of moving pieces and then a few unknowns. Right. But it all, as long as you keep following up with things and you just keep on, uh, if you need something, ask your wedding coordinator, ask someone that works for the ship. They are more than willing to accommodate and make things work for you. They do that best for normal customers on a cruise ship or wedding. They even go, you know, Above and beyond, yeah, that's yeah. what we found. Yeah, they're really, really involved. So. For sure. And at that point on, you kind of now have a wedding that's going to last the length of the cruise. In our situation, the wedding was early. So we had multiple days after the wedding for people still to visit. And in our situation, the bride and groom timed it so that they had dinner with different groups of people throughout the week. Right. So they had the big dinner with all 50, but it's hard to, you know, you know, mingle and, and talk to all 50 people at once during a dinner. For sure. So they managed to break it up and we'll, they do specialty dining with a couple people and then main dining with a few more people and they would just kind of circulate it through the week and that worked really well. Something you don't get to do on a land-based wedding that on a cruise wedding where you're there for multiple days. Right. It was a really nice thing and and there was also a wedding uh, excursion at one of the ports. Everybody decided let's do this one excursion and we all went off and did that as a big group and that was also really nice and special and it kind of felt like it was part of the wedding as, as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and uh, we asked the bride uh, afterwards, you know, when she came back, we said, so if you had to do it all over again, would you go through doing a cruise wedding? Because <laughs> it was hectic at times and, and sometimes, you know, it's it's tough when the cruise ship is out sailing and they're probably doing other weddings and different things all the time. It's like having your, your wedding venue floating around the world somewhere you can't actually physically go to it and talk to the people, yeah, right? Yeah, well, she really didn't meet her wedding coordinator <laughs> until 24 hours before the wedding. That's a little unnerving for the bride leading up to it. So I will give you that, you know, when you're just relying on emails and you haven't met the person. But, you know, within a half an hour of meeting her wedding coordinator, I think her nerves calmed down and she was yeah. like, okay, this, you know, she felt that everything was going to work. Out fine. And so as a result, her answer to that question was that yes, she would do it all over, over again. That she thought it was very special and uh, yeah. And, uh, and it's pretty unique. It's a yeah. unique way to have a wedding for sure. It is, yeah. But uh, And for us as the parents of the bride, it's kind of, you know, interesting too. It's a lot of parts to help get everybody there and uh, be prepared that if you're planning a cruise wedding, you're probably going to have a lot of first time cruisers because it's a reason for someone to go on a cruise that might normally not go on a yeah, cruise, right? That's true. Probably around 50% of the people that were with us were first time cruisers, you think? Yep. Around that? Yep. But so for uh, sure. we would definitely recommend it. Uh, we would definitely recommend it. In our situation, we did with Princess Cruises and they were fantastic. Right. Yep. It really, really, really felt like they went out of their way to make sure it was special. So uh, mm -hmm. we would definitely recommend that. And uh, yeah, what a wonderful way to have a vacation, a wedding, kind of a honeymoon all at once. <laughs> Even though the bride and groom said it really wasn't a honeymoon because all of their 50 closest friends and family were with them right. on their honeymoon. Right. But, uh, <laughs> and that was part of their choice too because, you know, they could have chosen to sort of hide away and be at different parts of the ship the rest of the cruise but they had family and friends come from all over the country and they wanted to spend time with them yep. that they hadn't seen recently and that so it became just a a big sort of week-long reunion and party for everybody 
but uh, it definitely wasn't uh, just the two of them on a honeymoon thing. <laughs> so they are planning on doing a follow-up cruise, just the two of them for a honeymoon know. later on again. Yeah. And some, some people get married on cruise ships, they decide that they're going to do a back-to-back -back cruise where everyone else comes for the mm. wedding for the first week, they stay on for the second week. So right. they didn't have a chance to do that. But uh, right. yeah, that's, that is one thing that people do that uh, want to kind of have a more formal, quiet honeymoon to themselves. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that was our experience. And if you have any questions, definitely ask us in the comment section below. We're more than willing to help out and you know, give, sure. you, give you some tips or answer some questions. Yeah. And as far as, you know, when it comes to pricing and the details of all the packages, every cruise line is a little bit different on pricing and what they do, what the options are. But they do all have wedding package information available on their website. Or if you contact them directly, they can get you that information mm -hmm. or your travel agent can even get that for you. So, uh, yeah, so we, so we won't go into the details of all of that part of it. But well, there's so many variables, it's yeah. hard for us to say. Yeah, so, is. you know, we sat down with the bride and groom and said, you know, what what do you want and where do we go? And from there, they picked what they wanted and, and we went from there. But it could be a, a, a bigger range of price per line, depending on what you choose to do. Yeah. So, so thanks for watching and hope you learned a little bit about uh, weddings on cruise ships. And if you want to see what it actually looks like and, and feel it on a day-to-day -day vlog type of uh, situation, then check out our vlogs on our channel here that you'll right. see that we covered every single day uh, the, of the wedding cruise, mm -hmm. including the wedding itself. We had some pictures in there and then the rehearsal and all that. So, right. so check that out if you want to learn a little bit more. And uh, like I said, comment below if you have any more questions. But thanks mm -hmm. for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.